My name is Sergio Popovic, proud to be on this stage for the third time as a member of Marvelous Oslo family, now in the most thrilling role, presenting the Václav Havel Prize for creative activism. We don't need to spend words about the importance of personality and the mission of Václav Havel, the poet, the playwright, the dreamer, the revolutionary, the father of the Velvet Revolution that inspired Eastern Europe. What some of you may not know, that he also served as a chair of Human Rights Foundation, and he's also responsible for us sitting today at this place. 2012, with the support of what's the wife's Dagmar, this marvelous prize was established. It has been given to the most creative activists across the world. Some people carrying it on the stage were Pussy Riot, or famous Turkish standing man, Erdem Gundus, and it goes to the people that fight authoritarianism with a great spirit of uh, creativity. Of course, it's in the shape of the goddess of uh, democracy erected by Tiananmen students, also comes with a nice price of 350,000 Norwegian crowns. Now, let me underline a little bit why creativity and humor really matters in nonviolent struggles. Working with movements across the world, we learn some things. Humor breaks fear. Nothing breaks fear and apathy stronger than the humor and creativity. Humor makes your movement cool and thin, so people want to join. Most important, mocking people in power brings them to stupid mistake. It made Serbian dictator Slobodan Milosevic arresting a petrol barrel with his face, made Vladimir Putin banning a protest staged by a little kinder toys, and it made the Zimbabwean dictator, Robert Mugabe, banning the selling Zimbabweans flag by Street Wender this year. This is the power of creativity. This year prize goes to something I'll try to pronounce well. And yes, it's called Bipolar Capybara or Chiguire Bipolar. It's a satirical website in Venezuela run by genius three people. They came to the idea that mocking the authoritarian will work. They started with producing the humorous news, and since 2008, they are building the name and prominence. They made a little series where they put all the presidents of the uh, Latin American countries on an island. They got 50 million views on the internet. They have the following of 1.7 million people on Twitter, which is why the president of Venezuela actually accused them that they own Twitter. So, without further notice, and underlining the honor and great message that this outline, I'm calling Elio Casale, Osvaldo Graziani, and Juan Andres Rabel to join us on this stage and raise this well-deserved prize. May the force be with you, and may the hope you're bringing to Venezuela ecos throughout the world. Thank you very much. It's such a pleasure and honor, and it's very heavy. Beware, we need to practice this. Okay, one, two, three. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Congratulations. Thank you. Good work. Thank you very much for uh, this opportunity and this prize. We are actually don't, are not very good as, at public speaking, but we do videos. So we decide to make a video to explain what's happening in Venezuela and how do we cope with it, okay? So roll the video. If you live in Venezuela and turn on the TV, everybody has one of those, by the way, you'll see this. For those who don't know who that fat dancer is, meet Nicolás Maduro, current dictator of Venezuela. But if you don't like watching dancing dictators and decide to change the channel, this is what you'll see. Or this. Or this. Hey, the man likes to party. But as you all know, what you see on TV is not always what you get, especially in countries like ours, where a small group led by a sad dancing buffoon clings to power. So, as I was saying, if you live in Venezuela and turn on the TV, you'll see this. But if you're lucky enough to have a cell phone or a window, you'll see what's really happening. So what is really happening in Venezuela? 
We have the worst inflation in the world. Food shortages have people scavenging through trash for a meal. Our murder rate is the highest in the region. There are no medicines in pharmacies and hospitals. People die every day for no good reason. Many children have died of malnutrition and anyone not dying is just fed up. Meanwhile, President Maduro has done nothing to resolve the situation. He's been doing just the opposite. Recent polls suggest that more than 80% of Venezuelans disapprove of his administration. And at this point, we really wonder, what the f is the other 20% thinking? But instead of listening to the people, Maduro's administration has turned into a tyrannical regime that has tried to erase the whole parliament, court-martial civilians, and crack down on protesters with an iron fist. And of course, let's not forget dancing on live TV while all of this is happening. During this recent protest cycle, over 40 people have been killed, 1,000 injured, and over 2,000 mostly young people have been detained. Those numbers are rising. Although we have the slowest internet in Latin America, thankfully, Maluda hasn't censored it yet. So millions of Venezuelans use their phones to get the news and actually report the news. Everyone's recording videos, taking pictures, uploading them to Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. That's where El Chihuire Bipolar comes in using fake news to comment on what's really happening. You are fake news. Okay, no, not, not that kind of fake news, but satire. Bienvenidos a Chihuire Bipolar Noticias, donde la noticia eres tú. Aunque no literalmente, porque la noticia es la noticia y ustedes son los espectadores. We take real news and give them our own twist. We use our stories to start a conversation and connect our readers, a younger, very engaged audience, with real news they won't see in traditional media. Have a laugh or two pointing out the absurdity in our so-called leadership? Hey, why not? That's why in every post we selectively backlink to an independent, serious digital news source. That way our audience can have an informed laugh. So Maduro dancing on live TV has become a symbol of censorship and, let's be honest, shame. A bizarre and cynical way to hide the truth. In this scenario, humor has become a very effective way of bypassing censorship. Maybe, just maybe, humor will help us stop the music. So, um, actually, since we made this video just a couple, a couple days ago, seven more people have been killed, uh, all of them young people. So, um, it's very sad what is happening right now. And we actually know humor by itself, or satire, or comedy, won't uh, bring democracy back in Venezuela, but it surely can help start a conversation. We believe that this is not a battle between people, but it's a battle of ideas. So this is a good way to start a conversation. Yeah, as satirists, uh, the only thing we can do is connect our readers with the harsh facts that they, the serious journalism can, uh, in, in a different way, they, they can do it. Yeah, um, well, I'd like to close by thanking <laughs> the Oslo Freedom Forum. Uh, I'd like to thank the uh, the foundation, and uh, they're really good to us. And uh, we'd like to share this award with the people back in our hometown, Caracas, Venezuela, the people working on this video, the people working on the Chihuire, and uh, there are a big group of creative producers, uh, yeah, sound people, designers, designers illustrators. It's a, a collective work. It's not just us, it's a group of people, yeah. It's yeah. And this is theirs too. We're taking the credit right now, but there's a lot of people behind this project. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we don't want to take credit. This is <laughs> and uh, finally, we'd like to dedicate it to the people who are right now in Venezuela doing creative descent, which is a, nom a name I love because I didn't think of us as that. We didn't think of us as creative dissenters or whatever, <laughs> how you conjugate that. But uh, we feel it's very, very important what, what they are doing, and not only us on the web, but people. There's musicians on the street who are being thrown tear gas and they're being killed, and they're just playing the violin or El Cuatro. And there's people, there are a lot of silent, invisible people helping their resistance. Doctors who are not uh, getting paid to, to attend those people, or, or people raising money, for example, comedians that are doing shows just to raise money so the people in the Green Cross, which, is, which are the students from the universities that are attending the protesters during the rallies. So there's a lot of people and there's a lot of silent hidden heroes 
behind this, this moment in Venezuela. So we want to dedicate this to them. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Venezuela. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.